Hello and welcome to another very important section of this complete MongoDB course. In this section, we are going to learn about the authentication and authorization in MongoDB and how to create users and assign roles to those users for accessing and working with MongoDB databases. So let's get started. Now, why is authentication and authorization required? By default, if we don't have any authentication and authorization in place, any user can access the database in MongoDB server and perform read-write operation on the database collections. So any user who has the connection string of our MongoDB server can go ahead and connect to the MongoDB databases. And then he can perform any action he wants. He can go ahead and read data from the collection, update data in the collection, insert or delete data from the collection. So without authentication and authorization in place, any user can perform any action on the databases in our MongoDB server. But when building a real world application, you might want to restrict access to the databases in MongoDB server. Not everyone should have the right to access the databases and perform read write operation on the collection. Also, if a user has right to access MongoDB server databases, he should be restricted to only those databases which he is supposed to work with and not to all the databases. And if a user has access to only few databases with which he is working, he should have certain restriction on the database. For example, not all the users should have access to write data in the database. Few users should have only read access because they are not supposed to update or delete data or insert a new data in a collection. They are only supposed to read data from a collection and do some analytics or create reports. They should not be able to write data in a collection. Also, in your organization, you will have few admin users who are responsible for creating a new user or updating the privileges of an existing user. Not all the users should be able to create or update users. And because of this, you need some kind of authentication and authorization mechanism in place to allow only authenticated users to access your database and only authorized users should perform certain tasks. And this is where we need to implement authentication and authorization in MongoDB server. And we will learn how we can do that in this section. Now, what do we mean by authentication and authorization? Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user or client attempting to access the MongoDB server. It ensures that only authorized individuals or system can log into the database. And when we have authentication in place, it prevents any unauthorized access. Without authentication, anyone with network access to the MongoDB server could connect and potentially read, modify or delete data. Also, authentication provides data protection. Sensitive data stored in databases such as personal user information or proprietary business data must be shielded from the unauthorized entities. Then many industries require strict authentication mechanism to comply with data protection regulations. Also, authentication ensures that all database activities can be traced to a specific user, which is essential for auditing and forensic investigations. So authentication simply means verifying the user who is trying to connect to our MongoDB server. Then we have authorization. Authorization determines what actions an authenticated user is allowed to perform within the MongoDB database. Once a user is authenticated, MongoDB checks the user's role and privileges to decide whether they can access certain data or perform specific operations. And the advantage this authorization process provides us is basically it limits the permission. It ensures that users only have access to the data and operations necessary for their role. For example, a read-only user shouldn't be allowed to delete data. It also minimizes risk by assigning granular permissions. You reduce the risk of accidental or malicious changes to the database. Then different roles can be restricted to perform only the tasks relevant to their responsibilities. And it also provides an extra security layer. So even if someone compromises a user account, authorization prevents them from performing destructive action if the role assigned to that user has limited privileges. So in simple words, authorization determines what actions an authenticated user can perform on a MongoDB database.
So once we have authentication and authorization in place, before connecting to MongoDB server, a user will have to authenticate himself. If the user is authenticated successfully, then only he will be able to access databases in the MongoDB server. And after he has got the access to the MongoDB server, based on his role, he can perform certain actions. For example, if the user has only read access, then that user can only read data from that database. Okay, but if he tries to perform an update operation or delete operation, since he does not have that access, because he has only read access, he does not have any write access, that user will not be able to update or delete data from the collection. And this is the advantage of having authentication and authorization in place. Now, how do we enable authentication and authorization in MongoDB server? There are two ways in which we can enable authentication and authorization in MongoDB server. First, when we are starting the MongoDB service using MongoD command. So we have seen that we can also start MongoDB service using MongoD command. At that time, when we are executing this MongoD command, with that we can add this flag hyphen hyphen auth and it will enable authentication on that MongoDB server. Another way is by enabling authorization in the configuration file of MongoD. So in the configuration file, we can simply set this authorization to enabled. And when it is enabled, user will first have to authenticate himself in order to access MongoDB server. And once the user is authenticated, then only he can perform any action on the MongoDB server based on his roles. Now, how does a user will authenticate himself? By providing his user ID and password. And we will see that practically. Now, once the user is authenticated, based on his role, he will be able to perform tasks on the MongoDB server. So in MongoDB server, the authorization happens based on role-based access control. Role-based access control is a security mechanism that assigns permission to users based on their roles. A role is a predefined set of actions that a user can perform, such as reading data, writing data, or managing users. In MongoDB, roles are collection of privileges, which are action a user can perform on specific resources like the databases, collections, or clusters. Each role specifies what actions are allowed for that user. For example, if a user has read role, it simply grants permission to the user to read data in a specific database. But if the user has read write role, it grants permission to the user to read and modify data in a database. And a user can also have an admin role. And this role grants permission to the user to perform administrative tasks like creating indexes or managing collections. When a user is created, they are assigned one or more roles. For example, you might create a user with both read write and DB admin roles. In that case, the user will have access to perform read write operation on the database collections and also he will have permission to create indexes or manage collections. So you can also assign multiple roles to a single user. Then MongoDB enforces access control by checking the roles assigned to a user. If a user tries to perform an action not permitted by their role, MongoDB blocks that action. And again, we will see this practically. So remember that MongoDB uses role-based access control for authorization. So I hope now you understand why we need to have authentication and authorization in place for MongoDB server and how it allows us to secure data. Once authentication and authorization is in place, only the users with necessary permission can work with databases in MongoDB server. In the next lecture, let's learn about different types of roles that can be assigned to a user and what these roles will allow a user to do. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.